I invite Elder Butch of the Songhees Nation to offer a blessing. I Good morning, my friends and family, or good afternoon, I should say. Uh, my name is Hugh Quilipton in our language, and my English name is Butch Dick. It's my honor to be today to be here with you, and I thank Premier Horgan for the invitation and always the recognition of uh, the traditional territory of the Songhees Nation and the Squamalt Nation in our gatherings in our house. The blessing from the elders is so vital to our ceremonies. And this house has many, many ceremonies. And I think the Creator has to marvel at all the gifts that people bring to this house. And today we ask the Creator to give us more light at the end of the trail to create hope for the people, not only of British Columbia, but Canada and the world. And it seems like that that hope is there. And we, we really understand what is happening in this world today. But I think we all long for that closeness of friends and family and community. So we ask the, the elders if they could give us the patience that they have. We ask the ancestors that are here for the wisdom that they have. because the world needs it at this point. And I lift up my hands to you because words of prayer are a way of showing gratitude and encouraging each and every one that we have a word in our language called Natsamat, one heart, one mind. And it seems like the world is calling for collaboration in a big way. So, Creator, I'd like you to smile down on the circle of people and give them the courage and the energy to approach a new reality. And I thank you for this opportunity to be here today and I wish you well. I express him. Thank you. Sincere thanks, Elder Dick, for your blessings. Honorable members, uh, Her Honor, the Lieutenant Governor, is in the precinct. Please remain seated while we wait uh, for her arrival.
be seated. Your Honor, may it please Your Honor, the House of Assembly has elected me as their speaker, though I am but, but little able to fulfill the important duties thus assigned to me. If in the performance of those duties I should at any time fall into error, I pray that the fault be impu imputed to me and not to the Assembly, whose servant I am, and who through me, the better to enable them to discharge their duty to the queen and country, humbly claim all their undoubted rights and privileges, especially that they may have the freedom of speech in their debates, access to your honor's person at all seasonable times, and that their proceedings may receive from your honor the most favorable interpretation. Honorable Speaker, I am commanded by Her Honor, the Lieutenant Governor, to declare to you that she freely confides in the duty and attachment of the House of Assembly to Her Majesty's person and government, and, not doubting that their respective proceedings will be conducted with wisdom, temper, and prudence, she grants and upon all occasions will recognize and allow their constitutional privileges. I am commanded also to assure you that the Assembly shall have ready access to Her Honor the Lieutenant Governor upon all seasonable occasions, and that their proceedings, as well as your words and actions, will constantly receive from her the most favorable construction. Good afternoon, friends. I'd squat Charles Taylor Cha. We begin by acknowledging the Lekwungen peoples, the Songhees and Esquimalt First Nations, upon whose traditional lands we are gathered today. We open the 42nd Parliament at a difficult moment, when the successes we have collectively achieved in flattening the COVID-19 infections curve in the spring stand in contrast with the toll exacted by the wave we now confront. It is a long-standing tradition to begin a new session by memorializing prominent British Columbians who have passed away since the last speech from the throne. At this extraordinary time, it is appropriate to focus on the almost 500 British Columbians who have died from COVID-19. We pause to mourn those who have passed, all of them taken from us by a virus that was unknown just one year ago. We acknowledge the grief the pandemic has caused all British Columbians especially those who have lost someone they love. And we recognize the compounding effect of the pandemic on the parallel health emergency that is the opioid crisis. We mourn those we have lost to an increasingly toxic drug supply. They were our children, our parents, sisters, brothers, and neighbors. And their memory fuels our continued resolve to turn back the tide again to save lives to get people treatment, and to end this terrible crisis. While COVID-19 threatens people of all ages, our elders are especially at risk. Seniors infected by COVID-19 are more likely to end up in the hospital, and sadly, much more likely to die from it than younger people. Those whose health is most endangered by this global pandemic are the same people who have already been through their share of hard times. They faced challenges they did not always choose, but they carried on with an eye towards a better future. Now it falls to us to do the same. This moment calls on all of us to show resiliency, to look out for each other as those who came before us did. We did not choose the challenge of COVID-19, but we are meeting it. Healthcare providers have worked themselves to exhaustion and put themselves at risk to care for others. So many other workers have kept our supply chains running and food on our shelves. Teachers and educational support staff are keeping our classrooms and childcare centers open so that children can continue to learn, grow, and make connections with friends. Most of all, ordinary British Columbians have made extraordinary efforts and sacrifices to keep their communities safe. Overwhelmingly, British Columbians have united behind frontline caregivers and workers 
and continue to reject those who would divide us. Already we can see the signs of better days ahead as science and research lead the way with new treatments and vaccines. As we gather here today, we recommit to putting our shoulders to the wheel and working together to make those days, those better days, a reality as quickly as possible for everyone. Focusing now on beating the virus will allow British Columbia to move as quickly as possible to address our economic recovery by investing in people, strengthening communities, and supporting jobs and growth in a clean energy future, we can build a recovery for everyone. All will be guided by this government's core principles, including climate action and reconciliation with Indigenous peoples. Nothing is more important than the health of your family. While the scale of COVID-19 means that we use numbers to understand its spread, behind those numbers are real people and real families. Families grieving a parent or grandparent who died without their children by their bedside to comfort them. Others unable to find solace in the rites, sacraments, or ceremonies of mourning. Even for those who recover, COVID-19 can mean weeks of pain, fear, and uncertainty. Your government's priority in the fight against COVID-19 has been, and will remain, protecting people's health. In the spring, government acted decisively in a matter of weeks, the Government of British Columbia worked with the federal government to quickly close the border with the United States. Addressed outbreaks in long-term care by limiting workers to one facility and providing supports for safer visits for families. Acted to provide appropriate care in Indigenous, rural and remote communities. Postponed non-urgent surgeries to prepare for the initial surge of hospitalizations secured the large amounts of personal protective equipment our frontline workers need to keep our health system safe, and worked with public health officials to implement a strategic testing and contact tracing strategy to limit outbreaks as they emerged. In the early fall, your government rolled out additional plans, including hiring 7,000 new frontline healthcare workers, including healthcare aides, to help ensure seniors get the high quality care they need and deserve and hiring approximately 1,000 people to work as contact tracers to help stop further spread in the community. The steps taken so far have saved lives. However, as we face the latest wave of COVID-19, we must do even more. In the months ahead, your government will build on the measures already in place. Some programs will be extended or expanded and new ones launched. First and foremost, we will continue to support people communities and businesses to implement whatever public health protections are necessary to address outbreaks. Preparations are underway for when a vaccine is available. The focus will be on distributing it to British Columbians quickly and safely, beginning with those most at risk. A new hospital at home initiative is ramping up across the province that allows patients to receive medical services in their own homes, helping to reduce con congestion in hospitals. Your government will also move ahead with a health care plan based on three main goals. Faster care, so patients will have shorter wait times for the care they need. Care closer to home, so more people will be able to receive care in their local community or even at home. And more personalized care to make it simpler and less stressful for patients and their families to navigate the health care system. Your government will take action to, on faster care by adding more MRI machines in high demand areas to reduce wait times, training, recruiting and certifying more skilled healthcare professionals, and bringing in new approaches to build on the success of our surgical renewal plan and an increase in diagnostic procedures. Government will ensure that patients get care closer to home by delivering 10 more community-based urgent primary care centers in more communities and building and modernizing hospitals. And your government will develop more personalized health care by expanding primary care networks and refocusing on rural health care. It will also work with health employees and unions to hire a workforce that better represents the communities it serves. Keeping seniors safe and allowing them to live with the dignity and independence they deserve are top priorities for your government. Government will continue to make the investments needed to deliver better care for seniors 
and stability and safety for long-term long care, long care workers. When COVID-19 hit, BC was an economic leader in Canada. Our province saw robust growth, rising wages, and unemployment at or near the lowest in Canada for two years running. Balanced budgets and a AAA credit rating put us in an enviable fiscal position. Over the same time, government made significant investments to benefit British Columbian families, communities, and businesses, and to help make life more affordable for people. Building affordable housing helps more families find good places to live, while helping businesses attract and retain talent. Investments in childcare give children a good start in life, while creating jobs and allowing more people to join the workforce. Fixing roads and bridges shortens commute times and makes life safer while creating jobs and helping BC businesses get their goods to market. The same applies to the investments and the necessary public health measures that keep people safe during a pandemic. These actions do not restrict economic activity. They are the tools government can use to foster it. In short, healthy people are necessary for a healthy economic recovery. Your government acted quickly to support people during the pandemic. More than 600,000 workers received help from a $1,000 emergency benefit. More than 86,000 renters got the peace of mind that came with temporary rent relief and protection from the threat of eviction. More than 200,000 people on disability and income assistance received crisis supplements. 80% of BC families got more money in their pockets thanks to a doubling of the Enhanced Climate Action Tax Credit. During this first phase, your government's interventions were focused on helping people observe health restrictions without fear of losing their incomes or homes. Businesses received help through property tax cuts, deferred tax payments, and BC Hydro rate relief. These measures have helped protect jobs and businesses. Among the large provinces in Canada, BC has the highest job recovery rate of pre-pandemic employment levels. But, as with fighting the virus itself, now is the time to redouble our efforts. This fall, your government released a robust economic recovery plan. Eligible businesses are already receiving direct support from the plan's various measures, including the Small Business Recovery Grant, the Increased Employment Incentive, and the PST rebate, on machinery and equipment. These supports provide direct funding to hard-hit businesses, making it easier for them to invest in the people and capital needed to recover. In the short term, government will support businesses, jobs, and incomes in several ways. Give most British Columbian households direct financial assistance and help support economic activity during the recovery with the BC Recovery Benefit. Reward eligible businesses for hiring. Help thousands of people upskill or reskill and find in demand jobs in the post COVID 19 economy. Make it easier for companies to bet on themselves and increase productivity by rebating the PST on capital investments like machinery and equipment. And give renters a bit more financial breathing room. Protecting incomes and businesses will help us realize a strong economic recovery. Other actions will too. Your government will ramp up investments in transportation and infrastructure, which will stimulate growth during the recovery period and benefit British Columbians through shorter commute times and greener transportation. Expanding childcare and early learning is another strong economic development policy. By creating jobs and allowing more parents to work, childcare counts as strategic economic infrastructure every bit as much as roads and highways. In the months ahead, your government will provide millions of dollars to childcare providers to help them deliver COVID-19 safe care, and millions more to school boards and health authorities for renovations to create more spaces. This moment calls for action. The way to get through this difficult time is by following the same approach we used during the first wave. By listening to the experts, supporting healthcare workers on the front lines, and taking care of each other. This government pledges to be there for British Columbians for the long haul. Soon, members of the Legislative Assembly will be asked to vote for the appropriation of funds to make the plans outlined above a reality. 
representing British Columbians in the legislature is a privilege and a responsibility. Never more so than in a moment like this. To the members of the legislature, may your commitment to the well-being of all British Columbians guide and inspire your work. And I add to this my personal thanks, my gratitude, and my deepest respect to all of you for the many sacrifices that you make for the privilege of serving us. I feel so very proud of the work that you do all together. Heichka, merci, thank you.